Somebody's in trouble. Here comes Tier, and he just fearless is two, three, four players away, and that was outstanding. That's what allowed his team to get through the game. Plus, he's using that sock puppeteer skin, and it has that funny voice whenever he uses the fearless, and it's it's even better that way. Like you get peeled for, and you like hear the little sock puppet making noises. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Bailey, professional broadcaster. Howdy. That's 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 what we pay him for, apparently. <laughs> How come no one says howdy? Howdy is howdy is a regional regional salutation. You hear it usually not just in the southern United States, but but specifically on the state of Texas. Thanks, Professor F. Dot. That was more of a rhetorical question. I just think howdy is a cool word that more people should use. I didn't need a geography lesson. Yeah, well, it's actually anthropology. Geography is really the study of just the. Do we have picks and bands ready yet? And here we are, picks and bands coming out for game number Thank two. You of Kingdom versus Elevate. Kingdom have the second pick this time around. They'll be trying to stretch this one out to three games. Team Elevate, they want to win now. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Kobe back on that soul. He did so, so well. I mean, the late game, we talked about some of the, the shortcomings there, but overall, I mean, he had like 13 or 14 kills. He can't really sure. fault him too much for that. Uh, and if Elevate don't select that tier in the first three picks, I'd really like to see Kingdom take that away from Mr. McWaffle. It's a newer addition to the roster. He's proven he can play that character. Let's sure. make him prove he can do something else. Well, the Zeus is going to be banned out. They thought it was a little bit too troublesome, they being Kingdom Esports. And Team Elevate will opt for the Terra ban this time around. Yeah, another another shot at Truancy. We saw the Vulcan being banned away last time. Now in the first pick position, Zeus, the first one taken away from the Elevate mid laner. Terra still a consistent ban from Elevate. And there's the other shot at Truancy, Vulcan. Yeah, so both mid lane selections. But unfortunately, I mean, Zeus and Vulcan aren't really top tier bands so when it comes down to it Terra and Ratatask are you sure you're looking at it there's so many gods open right now for this game the the number one that I'm thinking of right now is Erlong Shen Erlong Shen Erlong Shen is open for camping solo he played it in the jungle in the first set here up against yep. uh, Versace about an hour ago or so it feels like uh, <laughs> did very very well there and there it is. it is locked in this is a flex pick as well I, we know camping solo can play it in the jungle We'll have to see if Yo-Yo can play it in solo or maybe even McWa or, uh, McSalty Cakes, rather, in support. Well, Team Elevate, they've got two selections now, 30 seconds on the timer. We'll see how they select to go. Do you think they respond to Arlong Shen with some interesting pick of their own, or do they just go in a different direction? They probably just go in a different direction. I wouldn't mind uh, seeing an Athena here for ripping Holes. Athena pretty highly prioritized in the console scene overall and on the PC side. Uh, we could also see Jumpa potentially take Athena into the jungle. It's another strong flex pick option there it is. Uh, Athena picked up early here could see Kronos taken away from Zaxi given to uh, given to Keeg's mate as well that's the call that I'd like to see Keeg's mate on the knees did all right but instead we're gonna see the Scylla play come out elevate gonna again Zeus, uh, Truancy got banned out Zeus and Vulcan so he gets a big purse mage of his own I mean you've only drafted two one of them's the big damage the other one's a setup for the big damage so it's looking <laughs> pretty good so far for elevate and if they want to go for that neath again that would even go, go for even more setup sure for this Scylla. Uh, we'll have to see what Kobe Sorry. wants to go for in the mid lane here. Uh, could be the raw. I mean, we don't. We did see the raw okay. in the last set. Uh, didn't get played to the, to the full effect, but with the Erlong Shen combination, it, it could really be pretty potent. But Mana tells me that, that Erlong is not going to be in the solo lane. Yo Yo ABC very comfortable on the little babby and uh, Kronos for Zaxi. Exactly. With Odin being played last time around, I was a little bit afraid about the ROP selection here uh, with another pick going in the way of, o of Team Elevate. So we'll see Odin one more time. I mean, Odin already does really, really well up against Erlong and Vimana. Yeah. I mean, you cage those two characters in and then they just kind of flail around until they die or the Odin cage drops down and they can finally <laughs> heal a little bit. It's one of those two. I love the Odin selection coming out of Elevate, especially followed directly by the Awilish Band. That's the big counter, right? That's the big uh, god that you do not want to be playing Odin into. Your bird bomb combination is completely negated anytime a Willish is around you. So taking that off the table, just covering their bases, just in case that Erlong would be flexed over to the support. No nemesis for Jumpa this time around. It's going to be banned out, so we won't be able to see Jumpa try that one. Abwa again banned by Team Elevate. Man, really, really don't want to see the Abwa, man. They, I like they'd rather the see, they'd rather see the soul, I suppose. For me, I, I don't know. I, I've never really been a big believer in, in Habwa middle and competitive play just because he's so immobile. Same. And, uh, and so difficult to pilot correctly, especially with the type of engage that you have with Athena Odin already that really would have put Habwa in a bad spot. Soul able to get out of that Odin cage after a short delay from Disapparate. 
Uh, so I interesting choice of bands. No, uh, no surprise to see Jingwei locked in here, though, for Keegs. I love this selection. I mean, Jingwei is a powerful character. She can rotate the map very easily, and Keegs mate is definitely an adept player. Without a doubt, Bacchus locked in, so that will be Erlong jungle for camping solo. And surprise, Ooh. surprise, we see Soul yet again for Kobe. The Soul Chronos combination a second time. That almost beat Elevate by itself. Yeah, it really did. It was very close. Uh, the Runic Shield pickup early on for Mr. McWaffles was very, very intelligent. I really liked that. Uh, we'll have to see him go for it again here, I think. What's your take on the best time? Not, Not a fan. Not a fan overall. Um, Soul, slow immune and disapparate, so the slows from the cats aren't going to be able to keep up with her uh, as she activates her three. Uh, it does give Elevate a lot of split push potential overall. I mean, we saw DJ do that to great effect during Group B, but Kronos able to rewind, take all that dot damage off of him. Uh, you can do okay up against Vamana if Clear the Path is down and he activates the big baby. We saw it yesterday actually up against Marauder. You can actually body block Vamana in with the cats. Uh, <laughs> yep, yep, and yep. if you play, uh, uh, people who are very well versed in Bastet do that fairly often. It, you just kind of got to get up in their face and drop the cats on them and they kind of surround them and then you body block them in, which could be pretty effective here. But overall, I don't know. Thor would have would have looked pretty good. Yeah. Hunbats would have looked pretty good. Uh, just anything that would really uh, follow up off of the Athena taunt well it would have been synergizing pretty well as well. And you know, I I am I am a huge Bastet fan, despite her being a cat, not a dog. I, I actually really like her. I think she has incredible potential when it comes to invades. I think she's incredibly mobile, so she can make the split push really count. She does a lot of things right, and I think she's a great one size fits all. Uh, as assassin. She's just a good standard pick. You could do very well with her. But like all one size fits all assassins, there are certain situations that she does not excel in. And here, when you're looking at the guys on Kingdom Esports, burst damage is really what you're looking for. As you mentioned, the rewind is going to pretty much stop her. The Vamana is going to be able to heal up through it. And Kobe's going to be able to deal with her as well, thanks to the Saparate. When you best that really shines with his characters with escapes. When you look at when you're looking at characters like Giannis, sure he goes through the wall, but you're not getting razor well, you're not getting that razor dot off of you. Here, quite the opposite. So it's be an uphill battle, I think, for uh, for Jumpa to really make this pass that have an impact. Though, you know, my console brethren would be a little upset with me if I didn't mention the uh, the Xbox ranked meta being basically entirely split push all the time. So maybe Jumpa taking a little bit of uh, of a page out from from the ranked scene, gonna be going to primarily focus on the split push potentially. Though, I mean. The more I think about it, the, the more I do like it a little bit, uh, just because you, you don't really need a whole lot more CC from what you got. And uh, hold that thought, actually. Great route onto Camping Solo. Forces the Purification. Razor Whip going to dot him, but the Health Pot is ticking. Not going to be able to finish him off, but getting that Purification off of the Erlong jungle means that he is very, very vulnerable to a rotation from Rippin' Holes could set up an easy Sikkim by a monster combination or even a Sikkim Crush would probably finish him off. Yeah, I mean, Cam and Solo, uh, he just, as far as his inventory is concerned, I mean, he can't have too many more green pots. So that one's going to be pretty much permanent. Root's going to miss there on um, Truancy. Well, have to see how well Truancy plays this Scylla. I mean, a lot of console players like to play the Scylla, but haven't really seen the amount of success that warrants an early Scylla pick like we've seen. He does have a good amount of setup on this team for him. It, it really mostly Athena, but slows from uh, Bastet and Odin. The cage doesn't really help out that much except for Crush. And uh, Jingwei knockup does help. But a lot like Hebo Water Spout, it, it doesn't set up great because it carries momentum with the knockup. It's not like a Bacchus where they go straight up and down whenever right. they're knocked up. They're going wherever they're going. They just do it in the air instead of on the ground. <laughs> Trouble in the mid lane, still aggressive as always. There's a nice little knockup coming out from Arlong Shen. The follow up from Kovi is going to be sanked out. So no first blood just yet. You can see the fight potential that Erlong Shen and Soul have in the early game. Soul gets that passive stacked up. She's got the heat maxed up and just does so much damage with those auto attacks. Camping Solo keeps uh, Truancy locked in place long enough for Kobe to do a ton of damage. Camping Solo is going to retreat. Soul has already done so. Coming into the mid lane might be troublesome, and Camping Soul is going to pay for it. Taking a little bit of a life bar chunk thanks to the crush out of the Scylla. But he still has the regen from Bumbas if he goes to clear out these uh, fire gremlins or anything like that, as well as uh, the ultimate if things get a little bit too hairy, that right. blessing is going to heal him up after the taunt. So certainly a number of tools to really deal with the nonsense he's getting. 
Cam and Solo gonna get aggressive, use the Mink to charge towards the Odin, the shields and the cage come down almost immediately. In comes the cat, she's gonna take out the dog, but Truancy does it first with dogs of her own. Ultimate going the way of Scylla, it's one to none. Animal on animal violence, man, this is rough. But there's Truancy looking comfortable already. First, I'm a monster on the mark. I love the cage right away from Mr. McWaffles. <laughs> Tom, what is wrong with you? I was on a roll, man, and then you just start laughing. I was good. Whatever. Excellent. Okay, so anyways, I love the cage right away from Mr. McWaffles. As soon as uh, as soon as he sees Camping Solo coming at him with the 70 transformations, locks him in, and then he, that, that blessing not going to heal him at all. You see him wait, try and wait it out so he can time that, that the heal will go off as soon as the cage falls, but just not enough time to survive. Yo, yo, ABC on this Vamana. Vamana versus Odin, pretty one, one of the older matchups we've had in Spine. How do you think this solo lane breaks down? Odin's favor, 100%. I mean, he is going to get out cleared a little bit by the Vamana, and if, if Vamana wants to, we can try and poke out the enemy solo laner, but sure. if he takes one step too far and, and Waffles has that cage available and the jungler's coming over, Yo-Yo's got nothing he can do about it. And Yo-Yo knows it. He's going to th sort of throw out the damage and sit way back. He understands that he's in a little bit of trouble. Yo-Yo does enjoy this Vamana pick. I've seen it on him a number of times. And he can generally do work. I mean, yeah, he had an awesome game earlier today in the in the challenge up against the Challenger Cup team Versace. He uh, he basically carried on this Fumana. Yep. So I like the early selection. It got banned away last time from him. I like putting him on a, a more comfortable god this time. And so this might help out Kingdom try to find the win against Elevate. Like we said, Elevate up one game to none, just like one kill to none. And this time King's making a land his shots, and it's enough. Zexy, sit down. Even with the purification, it doesn't matter. Oh, no, that was actually Keegs who used the yep. purification, but he gets a solo kill. Definitely worth it. Keegs loves to say soloed, and uh, he gets his opportunity there. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to be yelling it, and he deserves it. Team Elevate off to an early start here, just shy of a 1,000 gold lead. I just I just love the gas pedal potential from Jingwei. I mean, she can knock you up and then hop on the Persistent Gust herself, use the agility to chase you down, and then is going to be able to match that extra movement speed and Fatalis effect coming out of Kronos. Zaxi, despite taking that early death in lane, does elect to finish off the Doom Orb, not going for a more traditional uh, Dynasty Plate Helm star, doesn't want to give himself any physical protections there, just wants to deal out that damage. And I, I still like it, right? He's going to go to the Doom Orb, and once he's, if he's able to n avoid what we just saw for the rest of the game, he's still fine. I always say the game, if you're building Doom Orb, the game starts once you finish it. If yes. You, if you die once or twice before you finish it, well, your game's obviously not doing too hot, but it's not the end of the world. Your game starts officially when you get that Doom Orb, and you're really able to start stacking it. So. Oh, so he didn't even get soloed. Yeah, I don't, no, no recollection of it whatsoever. No, all right, that's good. No idea. That'd be embarrassing. Yeah, totally. Luckily, it didn't happen. You need a new start, and that's what he's going to get. Three players grouping up in the mid lane from Kingdom. Just a little bit of aggression. Team Elevate playing it safe. Quite the opposite on the right side. They're looking for the kill on a yo-yo if it offers itself to him. King's mate looking for the reprise. Going to avoid the damage out of the mage shot from Zaxi. And this time, just clear the wave. Again, and you can see how many wards it's actually Kingdom has on that left-hand side. And with how aggressive Keegs is playing, I'd really like to see the jungler uh, camping solo come over to this lane and try and make an impact. The problem is, is that instead of Neath, you've got Jingwei this time to deal yep. with. It's so much harder to gang Jingwei because she can knock you up. She can use that agility herself after she knocks herself up. Even the 72 transformations only helps her out, basically. You can't use a turtle <laughs> to knock her up to CC chain her. Plus, of course, the airstrike goes off so quickly, takes you so far away so Kiggs is able to play this aggressive style without quite as much worry of getting punished as last game that being said I'd still like to see Kaming Solo come over here and at least make Keegs think about going all in on Zaxi. Exactly. We saw a little bit of the rotation out of the Bacchus, but as soon as he showed up, before he even showed up, we saw Jingwei back, and so it wasn't too big of a deal. You need to keep pushing that option. Exactly. And it, he did get spotted out on that ward underneath the Gold Fury that uh, one member of Elevate has placed, but a Sentry Ward will take care of that pretty quickly, and then that entire left side is pretty much dominated by Kingdom. Yo, yo, ABC still hanging on to a slight deficit here. 200 gold beneath his opposition. Kingdom Esports mid lane, gonna get taunted. There's a follow-up burp, a root is good, but no damage coming off of it. 
I like the patience from Camping Solo. No purification used off of that taunt. And then McSalty Kicks actually comes up and eats the root for him. He doesn't have to worry about it. Rewind is forced on the left-hand side. Traded out for the airstrike. That's good for Zaxi yeah. overall. It does make him more vulnerable. But more importantly, this means Camping Solo could come over and make an impact in the duo lane. Kobe's going to make the rotation. Well, everybody's going to make the rotation to the left side. That's how you respond to that fight in the duo lane. And now Team Elevate starting to think about this gold fury. They realize that they've got a number of tools for it. Uh, the cats, honestly, will do a great job of tanking up the gold fury, do a lot of damage. And then, of course, you have Truancy with the Alma Monster and the big burst out of Crush. So Team Elevate can certainly go for an early gold fury. But King of Esports are going to make them sure they're not able to by taking out ripping holes. They did get the purification out of Camping Solo that time, but at the cost of the life of Athena, it's going to be the first death for Elevate. I love the full commit from Kingdom immediately onto the support. That's what you do to Athena in the early game. You let her dash taunt you, you use purification, and then you just kill her over right. and over and over again. Right now, McWaffles looking to suffer the same fate. Knock up on knock up. He's going to get in trouble here. I'm going to walk out of the cage and just laugh. See you guys later. See you. That's Vamana's line. Later. Really? Yeah, that's what he says. In this skin, in particular. Yeah. Well, right now, Team Elevate going to try to find the farm up at the moment. Yo-Yo uh, does need to be a little bit careful. Oh, no, actually, Mr. McWaffles did just use the cage, so yep. he doesn't need to be careful. He yeah, can just totally chill and fine. do whatever he wants. But I was going to say, I mean, even if he's full health and Mr. McWaffles is sort of low, if Jumpa makes the rotation and the cage comes down, it doesn't matter what your health pool is. You're going to get shredded by those cats. You're going to have nowhere to go. And that's a great opportunity for, Yo for Mr. McWaffles and Jumpa to make an impact on this right-hand side. I've been calling for camping solo to camp the duo lane, but <laughs> I think the opposite should be the fact for Elevate. It should be Jumpa on this right-hand side, really punishing Vamana for picking into this counter matchup. Yeah, and at the same time, you know, Vamana just hasn't been hasn't been harassed at all. He's just been able to play his game. I mean, you can't really harass him as Odin by yourself. You need a rotation. The bird bombs, if you use them on him, he's just going to out-clear you and out-poke you. It's all about just waiting and biding your time until your jungler comes in. Huge oh, taunt, man. three, but no, I'm a monster. There he comes out a little bit too late. Wanted to get the crush damage first and then follow up with the damage from the I'm a monster. But unfortunately, the taunt was only good for one of those abilities, and the I'm a monster comes completely whips. Supernova over the wall is going to pick him up. Mr. McWaffles finds the uh, oppositional kill. Airstrike comes down. Zaxi able to rewind it out. Kobe stuck in the Smack. cage, ripping holes, drops down the pain. Keegsmate picks up another. Four dead for Kingdom. Just so much invested to try and kill Truancy, who again just kites around the map so well. And you know what? This is, I am so happy to see Keegs on the Jingwei. I understand the team composition. Here comes Vamana looking to steal the Gold Fury. Oh, well, it's going to go down and Team Elevate get it. They're going to look for Yo-Yo ABC. He's big, but that's about it. I understand the team composition from last time around. I, I totally get it, right? The Neath totally helps out the Zeus, etc. So I'm not complaining about the Neath selection by any stretch of the imagination. But Keeg's mate is a carry player. Yes. He can absolutely do exactly what Zaxi does. You know, th these are players that get spoken a lot about a lot in SCL circles and for good reason. So Kings made on the knees, sure. Not complaining about it, play for the team. I respect the gameplay, and I respect the fact that he'll play the knee and put himself down on a utility character to allow himself to affect the team. But at the end of the day, Ryan, I want to see him shoot people in the brain. Yeah. And that's what he's doing. You and me both, man. When I was on a team with Keegs, we never put him on Neath. You put me on Neath. I suck. Yeah, Let me just do like the uh, the CC or whatever. I, I want to really get my agree. brains carried out by a character like Jing Wei. Like, he loves to play Uller. Yeah. I beg him to play Freya because that character is insane yeah I, I, that those are the sorts of gods i want to see him on and i agree with you that that synergizes much better with his play style yeah and you know you know I, I i do like i said i have to clarify that i respect the team play you got to do it but at the same time i mean if you got it flaunt it and that's exactly what kings is doing just crush him zaxi zaxi a box native one of the best players in the league one of the best chronos players in the league in my opinion and he's just getting smacked by Keeks, mate. I mean, like, Zach's, you got to think about that. So, so a, a lot of times, you know, you'll have really good players on both sides, but for whatever reason, one player will have trouble with another. And, and Zaxi's always had a little bit of trouble with Keeks. Keeks consistently has gotten the better of Zaxi in lane. We saw the solo kill earlier on. <laughs> and whenever these two seem to go up against what each other, I mean, this? these are two of my two of my former teammates. I love them both, but for whatever reason, 
Keegs just seems to have a fun time in lane up against Zaxi. I mean, it totally happens. Sometimes you're just the rock to somebody's scissor, and you know it, and you're able to really flex that. And, you know, when you're sitting there as a scissor, at the same time, you have to understand that. You know, we've seen Zaxi take the fight to Keegs, mate. And if he realizes that Keegs, mate, has his number, if that's really the way that this opposition, that this matchup goes most of the time, you have to take that into account. You got you to gotta put your ego and put it in your back pocket. I had, a, I, had a, I had a band teacher that used to say that. He used to take his wallet out. So, you know, your wallet, your ego. Sometimes you got to take it and put it in your back pocket. Yeah, and but, that's what we need to see Zaxi do. But you can't walk around the streets of New York with your wallet in your back pocket, F. Dot. You know that. No, you do. You keep your cash in your front pocket. And right now, Zaxi ain't got no cash. He's in trouble. Sanctuary's gone, and so is he. Jumpman, Jumpman gets the kill. No, no Dynasty Plate Helm coming back to bite Zaxi yet again. Camping Solo oh, hey, is bud. here, but so is the rest of Elevate. Immediate taunt, purification used, but Camping Solo gets bursted by Jumpa. Jumpman's up to something. Two kills for him in just as many seconds. Here comes Mr. McSalty Cakes. One by one, the players stumble into this three-man grouping from Team Elevate on the left side. Earlier, we saw a very tight matchup this time around. It's 8-2, to two, and we're off to a hot lead of 3K for Elevate. And it's all centered around this duo lane. It's been Keegs really pressing the tempo of the game from this Hunter position, sitting at 3-0-4. He's been a part of seven of Elevate's eight kills early on. Look at his gold, man. He's over 8,000 gold. Tons of that lead is on him. 3,500 over top of Kingdom, as is Elevate as a whole. And more importantly, probably 4,600 experience. The duo lane, three levels Oof. Geeks has on Zaxi right now. And he's not going to stop anytime soon. I mean, this no. is this is what you do with the Jingwei, right? You just keep pushing the advantage. We saw we we saw we saw Keegs try to get a trap going, hiding in by the boards. Here's another trap left side of the uh, left side of the map, right side of the lane. Here he comes. Zaxi in some trouble. Nice purification out of Keegs, mate. But he's unable to actually find the shots. He really wanted that solo kill. Now Yo Yo, -Yo there it is on the right side of the map. But Phantom picked up as a second relic gets him out of that cage immediately. I like the Phantom pickup, but I still like the aggressiveness of Jumpa coming to that solo side and Mr. McWaffles. Pop, make him use the relic because yep. if you never make him use it, it's never gonna. It, you're never gonna be able to cage him anyways. And that relic cooldown is much longer than the ring. Much, much longer. Still sitting at 150 seconds right now, whereas that Odin cage probably going to be up in the next uh, 40 seconds or so. So you'll have a ton of time to try and abuse that long cooldown. It's about time someone came over and tried to help out my man Zaxi, dude. Not going to happen. McSalty Cakes is here, trying to keep Keegs off of him, but he's level 17. Keegs doesn't care about any sort of rotations. Camping Solo up on the top side finds two. Truancy taking a little bit of damage, but he's not too worried. He's got the support. Yeah, that's really what I was concerned about. I, I sort of got excited. I saw the Arlong Shen, but he's going to be chased out of here by the rest of Team Elevate. And, you know, th this is important for Elevate to understand. Not only do you have to understand your opponent's shortcomings, but you have to understand when you're killing it. And right now, Keegs is absolutely, objectively just crushed. It. And Elevate have to put him in position to really, you know, put him on a pedestal and let him carry the team. I mean, you know, this is a big game for Lan Keegs up against Kingdom. He's not sleeping through this one, man. He's coming out swinging. He's really, he really wants to come to Lan and qualify through the gauntlet here and join us in a couple weekends. And I think Elevate right now, they, they have a good shot. Obviously, they're up one game to none. And with Keegs playing the way he is, I mean, this is this is certainly a good look. Keegs may going to avoid the damage out of the Kronos, but can't find a shot for the life of him has to activate the sanctuary mid lane comes over and the soul's a little bit more ac accurate than geeks mate 1v3 again here comes help four players shelter over from team elevate and there's a root zaxi takes a lot of damage able to ult out and the rest of Team Elevate shelled, and they're looking for the retreat. Overall, this is looking really good for Kingdom. Zaxi putting some shots into Truancy, misses a couple autos, though. Yo-Yo going to chase him under the tower and picks him up. Big Baby is here, but so is Mr. McWaffles. And the Big Baby making a huge impact, already taking out one. As soon as this ultimate falls down, look for Team Elevate to go for the counter initiation. There's going to be a little bit of a silence. Keegs made hips over the top and is now all by himself. Maybe a little bit too aggressive there, but we'll still find a way out. Huge intoxicate there from Mick Salty Cakes. Hits all four members that are remaining for Elevate, and they poke them out. No cage, Mr. McWaffles, whenever he first came in. There he used it, but it was already too late. And here comes the push potential from Kronos and Soul. Despite Zaxi really getting the hands in this lane, he's still level 15. He's still got 50 stacks on that Dual Morb, and he's still going to shred your towers. And down it goes. Tier 1 tower headed the way of Kingdom Esports, shortening up this lead just a little bit. 
But Team Elevate still on top. Ripping holes, about 50% HP. Gonna walk by as he sees the Gold Fury being aggressed on, but they've got the Bastet with a Wrath. Kingdom Esports are gonna have to do a bunch of killing if they want to take this one. Huge There's a fly. great knockup, but still, the Gold Fury gonna be leashed. This is trouble. Looking for the kill out of the Gold Fury is Kingdom Esports. They're gonna pick up the objective. That's gonna be the turnaround. 10%, 9%, and it's in trouble. Truancy gets not a kill, but a big chunk, but Kingdom steal the gold. Truancy dashes in aggressively now. Keith getting very low. Zaxi just farming up the red buff while Yo-Yo cleans up the rest of Elevate. Two kills for three. Gold Fury goes the way of Kingdom, though, and that's a good thing. I mean, they needed some gold badly in that engagement, and they get it by way of killing the Wrath from Jump. A huge play from McSalty Cakes on this Bacchus, disrupting that entire fight early on. Team Elevate did not play that like they had a Wrath. Yes, no. there was an excellent belly flop. Oh my goodness. Wow. In comes everything. You still have a Wrath. There's no way that Kingdom can contest that. They have a soul in the mid lane. If there's a if there's a Scylla, if there's a Poseidon, if there's a Ra, if there's a burst mid mage, you gotta worry about. If there's a Wrath on the other side, you gotta worry about it. In that situation, Elevate did not play like they had a Wrath, and because of it, Kingdom are able to spank them and punish them. Elevate, fortunately for them and their fans, are able to find a three return kills, but Kingdom played that beautifully. I mean, they played like that they had a Wrath, but they played incorrectly with the Wrath. Jumpa doesn't need to be standing on top of Gold Fury. He needs to be around and then walk in and Wrath at the same time. Camping Solo gets caged and killed. That's what you do up against Erlong Shen. Yep. You pick Odin, you cage him, you kill him. Is that simple? It's really, it's really Sometimes not hard, it's that man. Simple. Sometimes it's that simple. Console yeah. gets it right with some picks, dude. Like Odin, Odin into Ra, Odin into Erlong, that stuff. They Guan get it right. you into anything? Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> right now, it's Elevate into Kingdom, just crushing it on the right side of the map. Pretty much the response to what Kingdom did on the left side. Kingdom able to take out a Tier 1, successfully take a Gold Fury away from the opposition, and now Yo-Yo ABC going to take Truancy away from Elevate. Trouble as well as Kingdom looking to continue the fight, but Elevate has made the rotation with a healthy Jumpa. Not so healthy now, half HP even lower. Yo-Yo chasing it, double slow, double dead. I guess you can't get double dead, but he's dead at least once. There goes the cat. Actually, that's a second death, so he is double dead. Double dead. You there nailed it. There goes the cat. Du double dead. There are the towers in the mid lane as well. Keegs picks up both on the split push. Yo-Yo ABC really keeping Kingdom in this game. Five and one. He's playing great right now. I mean, like I said earlier, this is the Vamana player on the Vamana. Glad to see him on a character that he feels a little bit more comfortable with. On the other hand, I like Mr. McWaffles jumping forward, sending Kingdom packing, but they're gonna pack up Yo-Yo ABC. He's stuck, he's buck, he's knocked up, and he's Keeg's mate's kill. Fourth kill there for Keeg's mate, still pushing that lead. He's got level 19, four, one, and seven, top of the player damage charts right now, followed closely by Yo-Yo, and Keeg's isn't done yet. He's going aggressive. Nah. He'll take the one on two, no problem, especially when he's got his support in tow. Taunt there, nice little knockup coming out from the Arlong Shen. Ultimate, will he heal? Absolutely not. Five, one, seven. No heal for the Arlong and no heal for the dog. He stayed a little bit too aggressive. Starting to build into the crit. Keeg's mate almost has that wind demon finished. It probably is going to finish it off here with this back to base. And with that and the explosive bolts on his two, he's going to be critting a decent amount of the time, getting extra movement speed, extra attack speed from the passive from wind demon. And he's going to be able to snowball this lead even harder. Still no dynasty played helm for either Kovi or Zaxi up against a heavy poke composition from Bastet and from Keeg's mate. I'm very surprised to see the lack of those items. Zaxi was surrounded. Team Elevate just sort of let him go. Kovi very low. Keeg's mate looking to finish it up, but a couple of members of Kingdom show up to protect him. It's about time. Keeg still wants it, man. He's going in. He's going to find it. it, too. Zaxi has made the rotation in, trying to help him out. Yo-Yo doing his best to box down the fed Keeg's mate, but he is going to get caged, and the rest of Elevate is here. And here's the trouble out of Truancy. It's not going to find a home, unfortunately. Shout-outs to Phantom. It's up that time, and they, yep. he's able to get him out. The big counter to Odin, that relic alone, just gets both himself and McSalty Cakes out of danger right away. Keegs has been able to life steal just a little bit, staying healthy enough to stick around and make an impact in these team fights. And that right there, that's not even Truancy is bad, right? Like, I, I hope I didn't convey that in, in my sort of disappointment. Truancy aims exactly where he's got to. The communication that Phantom's down has to be given out. It clearly wasn't, or Phantom was up, clearly wasn't communicated. And that one's gonna go in the miss column. 
And also in the miss column is Erlong Shen in the jungle. Oh, seven and one, Eesh. just above his own Bacchus in terms of damage. Camping Solo looks so good on this character up against Versace, but up against the uh, the stronger competition in Elevate really has not found it. Yeah, like I said, two very different teams and no disrespect to uh, to Versace or whatever, you know, they're, they're... I like Rob the Bob, go Sylvanas, but unfortunately uh, Team Elevate or uh, Team Elevate and Kingdom, a little bit more even of a matchup. So when you're bringing out these, these pocket picks or these characters that you're not as well uh, adept on, well, you know, 0-7-1, that's what happens. I mean, it there's, I don't think there's any, uh, I, I think that the guys on Versace would agree with you that there is definitely a disconnect there, but both teams, I think, are very evenly matched. I mean, you don't go to 55 minutes by being way better than exactly. other team. Yeah. You know what I mean? We saw an hour-long game there in game one. Elevate were able to take it out, but it looks like they're in a great position to do the same here in game two in a little bit of a quicker fashion. 8,000 gold in the lead, experience differences across the board, 10,000 experience, basically, and it's all been centered around the Hunter Keegs mate. Kingsmate is crushing it. He's what? Got six kills, one death. He's one, he's one third of an item away from full build. This guy is out of control right now. But out of control right now is the ultimate from Soul. Keegs is getting very low, forced to use the airstrike, just trying to do some different directions, mm. trying to get away from Yo Yo. This is going to be the second death for Keegs, it looks like. He does get away for a little bit, but Yo Yo ABC able to clean him up. Sixth kill matching Keegs. There's the ultimate from I'm a Monster, sanctuaried away by Zaxi. Too predictable there was Keegs Mate's directionality. Uh, you can see Yo Yo just following him into the jungle before he even landed. You've got to be able to sort of surprise your opposition, and it's just not going to happen that time. Zaxi doing his best to fend off the healthy members of Elevate, taunting in onto Yo-Yo, but he's still pretty healthy himself. Not a lot of mana. Jumpa going aggressive. Bit off a little bit more than he could chew there. Yo-Yo comes to support his hunter. Seven kills for Yo-Yo. Just crushing it, man. It, this this really is the individual game, right? Last time around, we saw just game the game really be carried by the entirety of the team. Everybody sort of doing their job and coming together in the right position. Now... This is Mr. This, this is Yo Yo ABC versus Keeks Mate and friends. I mean, this That's is what we're seeing. This here. is the big time. Whenever yeah. you're one game away from qualifying from land, if you're Elevate, it's do or die time. If you're on Kingdom, and this is the time where your big players have to come up big. And we're seeing t one from each side doing that. Keeks Mate for Elevate, Yo Yo from Kick. Oh, excuse me, from Kingdom as well. Exactly. And, I, you know, I, I want to give the, the supporters a shout out as well. Maybe not the traditional supports, uh, but really who's enabling these players. You're seeing Kobe really make it happen in the mid lane on this soul. But our Odin player, Mr. McWaffles, absolutely making it happen. There's the ring and the belly flop going to go on top. McWaffles in some trouble at this point. Nice knockup coming out from the mid lane soul, but not going to be enough. Raven Shield just doing enough to keep him alive. Now Keegs still positioning very aggressively, has the ultimate and both relics, so he's not scared to take a trade right now. Oh, Keegs ain't scared of nothing. He's going to go forward, looking for Yo-Yo, force out the dash. Perfect play coming out from the Hunter. Going to get knocked up here, no follow-up, however. Truancy up in the ultimate, no one even looked at! Completely off the mark, Truancy not had a successful game so far, and here's a wraparound from Arlong Shen. Camden Solo getting catted up. He's going to get jumped on, but it will be off the mark. The of the team front of the backside. Mid lane takes down Jumper. For someone finally dies. Jumper the first one to fall. Keek still in the back trying to get away from Zaxi. Camping solo on to ripping holes, but Mr. McWaffles level 20 doesn't have quite enough damage to finish off anyone, but Truancy does find Zaxi, and there it is. The Odin finds the Bacchus. That's his seventh kill. Oh, it's interesting. We've seen Truancy completely off the mark with basically all of his ultimates, but he's making the roots and the crushes absolutely count. Seven, three, and five. And like I said, despite the ultimates, very low. Kingsmate don't care. He goes right in and gets a kill for himself, but gets traded out. He went in with 10% HP. Of course he did. Truancy just finds a couple basics to finish off camping solo. Yo-Yo so low, just trying to find Yo. a kill on to Truancy. Uses clear the path, going to get away for now. Reach not quite enough damage. Highest base ah, movement speed in nope. the game. Turns on a truancy. Doesn't find the umbrella rang. The mid lane mage now with nine kills. Actually surpassing Keegs, but it's Keegs nearly doubling his damage so far. Gold Fury going to be started by Team Elevate. They win the team fight. This one will extend their lead even more so. Elevate off to a commanding start. Let's see where it lands after the Gold Fury 
finally falls down. I mean, down. despite this lead for Elevate, Kingdom was very close to winning that team fight. Truancy does a good job of baiting himself yet again. Tell me if you've heard that one before in this set. And just keeps himself alive. Keegs tries to make the big play, is able to trade out his life for another. But Zaxi just doesn't have quite enough damage online at this point. But now he does. He's finished the Rod of Tahuti after that fight. He's going to be restacking up that Doom Orb. If it's the same sort of drawn out engagement like that, Kingdom does have a chance to win it. Mixalty Cakes finds a great double flop at the beginning into the Intoxicate. Yep. Kingdom is playing well into this lead that Elevate has, but the lead is just so big that it's difficult for them to outright win the team fight. I think one of the biggest problems is that Kovi has a Pythagoras piece. Tell me why, Tom. Why do you think that? You think Bancrofts would have been better here? Yeah, you think man. a Bancrofts whenever you've got a Bacchus and a Kronos would have been better? I think the Bancroft would have helped him out. He's frequently very low. We've seen the soul stay at about 20% HP for the majority of these team fights. And the extra power that you get out of Bancrofts might have been able to be enough to clean up these kills. He has seven assists, only three kills. If we see that swapped around, he's seven, four, and three. In a different situation, he has a lot more gold. He's able to buy a lot more items and might be able to be a little bit more impactful. Or the fact that he's got the CDR on on Pythagoras' piece, he's able to stay alive a little bit better, throw out some extra stellar bursts, supernovas, heal himself up with Radiance so he's not as low all the time, and not only that, but contributing both Magical Lifesteal and Power to two other players on his team. Man, somebody's got to kill these players that are just <laughs> chasing camp and solo all <laughs> over the map. Oh my goodness, three players completely wrap around into the lane. Oh my goodness, camp and solo is, I mean, at some point, th so there's an idea in a keeping a player down and out, right? At some point, man, you just stop getting the gold. It stops being worth it. Nine, oh nine and one. I don't think I, I'd like to see Elevate really chase camp and solo like no, that. No, not at all. But Zaxi rewinds into the wrong spot. Truancy picks up double digits. Ten kills for him. Keegs was doing the 2v1. Now dashes out. Doesn't have any sanctuary. Yo Yo's nice looking for him. Up. But great peel coming out of the team via damage. Mr. McWaffles picks up Kovey in the background while the rest of the team is helping out their hunter. If Kovey had some extra CDR, might have been able to get away with it. Not going to be the case this time around. Talking to me off the mark. There's the knock up. Looking for it. True as he gets it. Not enough to kill. No, not quite. But he is going to dash in. There it Got is. Him. Gets the in hand. Shout outs to Polynomicon. Polly. Finishing off that kill. Truancy looking a little bit better now as the game goes on. I I'm a monster. Still not exactly where you want them to be. But uh, he's. you can't really complain with 11 -3. Yeah, exactly. That's, it's, it's, you know, it's, you're complaining about, you know. I just like to complain about mid laners, man. I, I really do. I know. I'm one All of other, I bet you every other role except for mid laners love me. <laughs> but mid laners must hate me because I just like trash talk them the whole time. Mid laners hate him. What's his secret? <laughs> Elevate Being a secret. huge jerk on cast. Elevate's got the secret on the left side. They're going to be able to take out the Phoenix and the Karma's going to help him out in the mid lane. By himself as the hunter. There's a nice taunt on the Zaxi. Down goes the mid bird. Elevate off to a much quicker start this time around. They've got two birds already at half at a half an hour. Plus, no towers left standing for Kingdom. It's literally one structure left on the map, and Fire Giant hasn't even been looked at yet on the side of Elevate. That's yep. going to change very soon. They get the left side Phoenix, the best one to get in this scenario. It makes it very difficult for Kingdom to defend their base and the Fire Giant at the same time, as well as the middle Phoenix, just adding on to that pressure, putting putting the uh, the grips on the Kingdom. Two players really are driving this vice, and it's Mr. McWaffles and Keeg's mate. They're the ones 5-0 oh, and 14 and 7-3 and 12, respectively. These two players have just been just enabling Elevate to be as dominant as they are. And, you know, you, you got you got to give the shout-outs to Truancy, but he's he's sort of shown up and, and been a little bit uh, a little bit sort of just helping out. Mr. McWaffles and, and Keeg's mate, despite the fact that they're not number one on the damage, they've really allowed Truancy to get to this mid and late game. Well, now Cam Excel caged again 10 deaths for the jungle early That's what I'm talking Shen. about. Zaxi just on the run rewind gonna go off baits out the airstrike from Keegs he full committed there but Zaxi just walked right back into the rest of Elevate see that's exactly what I'm talking about I don't want my Odin to be top damage if my Odin's top damage that means nobody else is doing their job in all honesty uh, Jumbo picks up Zaxi right there relatively easily my Odin 6-0 and 15 I want that I would be happy if that was 0-0 and 15 at this point right if he's 0-6 and 15 I'm still happy Happy. Odin's job is to just hug everybody. And then you let Jingwei, damage number one, and Scylla, damage number three, do the dirty work. That's exactly how this is working out. Gotta love it. Kobe coming back from split pushing that left hand side, looking at Truancy yet Bang. again. Supernova was good to put some damage on, but Truancy no still alive. Keeg's mate 
Going to take a little bit of damage. Crush comes in, chunks Yo-Yo down. He's one HP. Bird Bomb about to come in, but Rip it Holes grabs it with the reach. Love the play out of the Athena. Team Elevate pushing on the right side. Two players dead for about 20 seconds. Not too big, big of a deal. And Arlong Shed gets to the board. Him and Mr. McSalty Cakes able to make it happen. He's not a mister. He's just Mick. That's uh, Mr. McWaffles yeah, to it's you. Yes, Mr. McWaffles and McSalty Cakes. It's been a little bit confusing here, but not confusing is the amount of Phoenixes. It's zero. And the Jumpa able to clean that one up as well. Three players dead. Zaxi about to spawn. Mantle of Discord getting the double stun for Jumpa. Just trying to retreat. Camping solo. Trying to chase him down with McSalty Cakes. Zaxi is here, though. Has the wing blade for the extra movement speed. Misses the time, st time rift, rather. Cage popped by Mr. McWaffles just to make sure that the rest of the team can get out safely. Zaxi here, level 20 now, 0, 6, and 8. Not a strong game on the Kronos, unfortunately. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's okay because he's built full build now, and this is when he has to look to make the impact. Yeah, it, all your past sins will be forgiven if Zaxi can just put the team on his back and carry right now. Yeah. You've gotten to 33 minutes. It hasn't been pretty. You don't have anything left on the map nope. on your side. But you haven't lost yet. You've got almost full build. You can probably finish off the Polynomicon here. He's been sitting on that uh, enchanted trinket for a little bit. So he may be able to finish that off, and he does. So now six items. This is the time that Zaxi can make a couple plays, but it's going to be tough. I mean, so much damage for Elevate. You've got the damage from Jumpa, Truancy, Keeg's made, of course, uh, all looking very strong. Fire Giant, 25%. Nobody from Kingdom really wants to defend. Everybody's pushing up their lanes, which is honestly the right call. So Team Elevate now. Slew of gold in the lead, over 10,000 gold in the lead. Now have the fire giant around their waists as well, pushing up. Yo Yo ABC gonna take a little bit of poke, but it's less about Yo Yo and more about the finish. They just want to be going for this Titan, already poked out. Kobe steps up into five members. I don't know what he's thinking there. He's gonna There's get no Phoenix. Yeah, nowhere to run. Disapparate gonna buy him some time for now. Actually gonna keep save his life. Sanctuary was down as well, so forces out uh, the Sanctuary from Keeg's mate. So a little bit of a win. A little bit of poke coming out from Truancy there on the Scylla. Left side, Phoenix has respawned, and it's down as quickly as it shows up. Here's a big collection of Team Elevate here on the left side. Going to be rotating out. Camping Solo doing damage to the Hunter. Kingsman gets out of there, and Kovey gets out of there the hard way. Triple knockup coming out from the jungler, but Jumpa proves a little bit better. That one's going to send him back to the base the hard way. Jumping on top, Zaxi picks up one. That is an important kill. With Kingsman down, Elevate, they'll still have to take on this Kronos, but I think it might be tough. It's too late. Just so many fire minions pouring into the base. It's going to be Team Elevate coming out of the gauntlet here in North America. Going to be coming to the SEL Fall Finals land. And that be that. When you put Keegsmate on a character that's going to absolutely crush it. I mean, just that be that, man. That was it. I mean, Keeg gets a lead in the it gets a lead in the duo lane. Kingdom tries to come and help, but Elevate knows it's coming, so they come to help as well, and they just totally snowball off that lead. Completely out of control there, like I said. Really commanded by the outside lanes. You had Mr. McSalty Cakes uh, uh, really making those rings count. No, no, it was Mr. McWaffles. Mr. McSalty Cakes, but no, he wasn't a mister. That's just a McSalty Cakes. <laughs> He's on the other team. He's on Kingdom. <laughs> It's all right, dude. Now you only have to worry about one. <laughs> now it's only Mr. McWaffles. Even still. In any event, Odin, very impressed. My, my apologize. No disrespect intended. Uh, Mr. McWaffles played absolutely out of his mind. And like I said, I don't care if my Odin has a low amount of kills. I don't care if my Odin has a low amount on, on the damage meters. It's all about making the plays. And this is what it's going to be all about, making the plays as far as these groups are concerned. We'll see this later on in the month. Allegiance, Cyclone, GG, Elevate, and Aware or your North America, uh, are your uh, teams that'll come out of Group B, and Group A will be represented by Re Rival, Eager, Soar. And to be determined. To be determined tomorrow on the EU gauntlet. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll be here for that. So how this is going to work, by the way, for all of you at home, everyone's going to play only within their group. You know, so Eager's not going to be playing Allegiance or anything like that. They only play within their group. They each play each other two times in two, in two game sets, and the top two teams from each group go to worlds there is no super regionals nope. here for the console league you're just going you're playing straight for worlds and this is gonna it's it's the big time basically nice right quick. away exactly and this is it, it's a lot of fun we're gonna have them here at land and we'll see how that really works out you have any predictions for how these teams are gonna wind up 
Uh, it's tough, man. Group B seems to be the easier of the two groups. I mean, Rival has been so strong in Europe. Yeah. And Eager, you know, even though they didn't get the first seed, they were very close to it, always very consistent. Don't really know what you're going to get out of Sora. You never do. Uh, group B, Allegiance seems to be the team to beat. Aware looked good during the regular season, but you never know with the kind of volatile situation that they have with all the, the personalities on that mm -hmm. team. So it's going to be interesting. I, I can't wait, man. I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to seeing Aware uh, in, in a land setting yeah. and seeing how those guys work. They came out of nowhere, and they just started crushing people like they were seven-year veterans. And here, I really want to see how they work under the under the big lights, under the big cameras. How do they adapt to that sort of situation? Because a lot of these teams have sort of been through the ringer. They've done, whether it's SPL, MLG, even some of the UMG stuff, right? These guys have been yeah. around in the lands before. A lot of lands in the console scene once upon a time. So seeing how these new guys are aware, they come in and everything's all online. The yeah. other teams are used to being at land, so I really want to see how they adapt. Kenshin, the only one on that team that's been to a land before, yep. so it's going to be up to him to kind of corral the troops and make sure everyone's <laughs> doing what they're supposed to do. Absolutely. Looking very excited over there as far as that's concerned. And a very exciting day. Congratulations to Elevate. Uh, they pushed themselves forward. We'll see the conclusion tomorrow as well. For myself, Hindu man, Anatoly, my buddy Ryan, and of course, Peckies. We'll see you tomorrow.